In 1996, Nintendo released their new console, the Nintendo 64, alongside one of the most universally loved games of all time, Super Mario 64. Then, a few months later, Donkey Kong Country 3 was released. When you think of 1996 in gaming, you definitely don't think of DKC3. You think of the Nintendo 64 and Super Mario. For me, the game was likely overshadowed by the big deal of the year and some RPG stuff, but uh, it was also probably the one big blue onesie diaper wearing change that came to the series that turned me off to playing it. Yeah, Kitty Kong. So my friend got the game and it looked okay enough, but I just wasn't all that interested at the time. I'm sure it was because of the lack of Donkey or Diddy Kong in the game, but I couldn't tell you that for sure. Whatever the reason, I never played past the first level. Ever. Seriously, ever. When I recently finished Donkey Kong Country 2 for the first time, I wanted more, so I just decided to go ahead and pop in the third game, titled Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, and man, I had heard so many bad things about it that I was sure I wasn't going to care for it. First off, as I mentioned, Kitty Kong. The argument is he should have been Donkey Kong. You want a big lumbering ape in the game? Put in DK, not this silly looking chump of a chimp. Why is Donkey Kong's name in the title of every game yet he only stars in the first one? The combo of Diddy and Dixie worked really well in the last game with Diddy's quick moves and Dixie's better level of control. Dixie paired with DK probably wouldn't have worked had they kept Dixie the way she was. She's not that fast and she throws stuff from over her head with her hair. Kitty, on the other hand, may be bigger and stronger, able to beat the few enemies with a jump on the head that Dixie can't, but he is a bit faster, and he throws stuff like Diddy did. The thing is, while Rare definitely could have, and maybe should have, slotted DK in to appear in more than one of the games using his name, the combo here works and the levels are designed around Dixie and her baby cousin very well. I never felt like, oh man, I have to play as Kitty during gameplay. He was just as useful as Dixie was, and helped out in situations where she wasn't quite suited. For example, sometimes throwing in that underhanded arc just works better, and there are a few areas where rolling through the danger as Kitty was way easier than trying to get through as Dixie. The music isn't as good as the last two games. The tunes aren't bad by any means though, but are largely forgettable compared to the masterpieces that littered the original two Donkey Kong Country games. I just finished playing up this game as I am writing the script to this, and I can't for the life of me recall a single piece from DKC3. Again, I'm not saying the music is bad, it's definitely not. It just doesn't reach that legendary status that David Wise and Evelyn Fisher were capable of. Also, some of the bosses are kinda lame. Yeah, that's not really a huge bar to hurdle though. The bosses in the first game were incredibly yawn-worthy. While the bosses in Diddy's quest were better, they still weren't outstanding by any means. I will say though, that the final boss in DKC3 is probably my favorite across the whole series. And by final boss I mean the first final boss, not the one you beat for the true ending. I uh, have yet to play that. The barrel boss at the beginning of the game is alright I guess, it's no better or worse than anything in previous games. The clam guy where you get to play as on guard was kind of fun, but again not super compelling or anything. I did like the boss battle where you throw snowballs at a snowman though, that was pretty funny. Some of the levels in this game are also famously difficult, and yeah I have yet to play through the Lost World levels, but everything up to the first ending is not too bad. I will say that the last few levels are kind of stupid. The lightning level was tough and put you in some situations where you just couldn't win, and that sucked. The poisonous water level which flip flopped your controls was just annoying and long and I could definitely have done without it. And the level where the shield kremlings bopped you off ledges got really annoying until I figured out how to handle them, though they still killed me a lot. Personally, I think the graphics look really, really good. This may be the best looking SNES game. Maybe. I mean, I haven't played everything, but it's still a damn good looking game. The backgrounds are all super detailed and in some cases realistic looking. I love how everything looks, except, well, okay, except well, some of the enemies. Man, I get that you have to update stuff sometimes, but the bees in DKC 1 and 2 looked awesome. And here they just look too cartoony. And a lot of the Kremlings have better looking models than the original two, but their animations look really awkward. Actually, that goes for just about every enemy in this game. I liked the art style better before. They weren't overly cartoony like they are here, but whatever, that's a minor gripe, all things considered. But all things said, 
I had a freaking blast with this game. Despite all the complaints I had heard about it previously, I am so pleasantly surprised with how good Dixie Kong's Double Trouble is. The positives in DKC3 far outweigh the negatives. As I mentioned before, the graphics, aside from a lot of the enemy designs, are amazing. The music is good if it doesn't stand out as well. And the vast majority of the levels are honestly incredibly fun. I loved the levels where you have to jump between ropes to avoid enemies and hazards, like the climbing TNT barrels or when the ropes are on conveyors that make traversing them faster or slower and always more treacherous. I also really liked the overworld map. It's not just a straight go to point B from point A affair this time. You get different vehicles based on what good old Funky Kong can cobble together for you using the prizes you won from bosses. And that opens up more of the world. There are even a few points where you can choose which world to go to first. In the overworld, you can find secret areas that unlock banana birds, which I assume open up the lost world when you collect them all. And there are a few trading sequences you can do to open up other secrets by finding items and giving them to the right bear brother. Unless you are going for a 103% completion, these aren't really necessary though. The bonus areas in DKC3 are pretty optional if you aren't going for that full completion too. Sure they're fun, but my main focus this time was just to get through to the normal ending. So a lot of these were more of a diversion than something that helped me proceed through the game. You can collect bear coins to pay for trading items from the Bear Brothers, but you can also use them at Swanky Kong's minigames for more lives and stuff. But it's not completely necessary since you can go back and save with Wrinkly Kong at just about any point you want to. So a game over really only puts you back to the save cave and you'll have to traverse back to the level you died at. Extra lives are more of a convenience than a necessity. I feel like I've already covered everything I want to here. I just kind of thought a video on my initial experience of a fairly popular game may be fun. I do feel like I was kind of all over the place here, but uh, you get my point. Donkey Kong Country 3 is a very good game, and you should definitely give it a go if you were like me and haven't played it yet. It doesn't hit that nostalgic sweet spot for me like the first two games do, but it was still a blast regardless. Well, that's all I got for now. I appreciate everybody watching. Thanks. Later.